I'm Kelly Mitchell, and this is Women on Wine TV. We are bringing you the best in wine, women and us, <laughs> and music. And did you get a load of that music? Uh, our episode today, Why Foodies Love Zinfandel. Hey, guys, it's um, Hey Gals and Guys. It's grape exploration time. It's cult-like and it's everywhere in California. It grows so well in California wine country. It's the third most planted varietal and it's still referred to as a niche wine. Isn't that strange? But why foodies love Zinfandel? You know, we're celebrating Zinfandel because it's one of the friendliest pairing wines around. It's actually uh, one of those that you can drink alone or drink with food, but that big, bold, jammy nuances really adds a lot of value to you and us. So we're gonna tell you a little bit about the background on the grape and vine today, what kinds of food it pairs with and why foodies love this grape so much. It's such an amazing grape, it's got even a festival named after it, and it's called the Zinfandel Experience, coming up this February 2016 in San Francisco, but it occurs every year, so look for it. We'll put a link in the blog so you can have access to that at any time. And these incredible grapes are known for their blackberry, raspberry, boysenberry, cherry, and black pepper, cloves, anise, and herb nuances. So welcome to the show, my partner in wine, Deborah Trapin. Deborah, how are you? I'm awesome. Do we have any more to share about Zimmendel? My goodness, that, that was like the most comprehensive intro to a show ever. I think Kelly likes Zinfandel. <laughs> I have so much to share on Zinfandel. You're probably going to have to cut me off, honestly. <laughs> How about I just but, it? Um, there it is. I love it. What's that? I said, I think maybe I'll just end up interviewing you on it. <laughs> Ooh, that would be fun. And then, yes, that would be totally fun. Okay, so Zinfandel is the word for the show or Zin. So whatever you hear those words, what do you do, Deborah? Take a sip. A and, Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> we love to begin with quotes. Now, here's the quote. I like to drink young wines, wines which are robust and have a lot of forward fruit to them. I think the same way. And in fact, this person that I'm going to reveal in just a second, Zinfandel is actually his very favorite wine. Can you guess who I'm talking about? Um, likes young wine. I don't know. Captain Kirk? Captain Kirk? No. He likes nice young women. <laughs> this is actually... <laughs> This is actually Thomas Keller. He's the founder of the French Laundry uh, here in Napa. So um, he is definitely known to favor Zinfandel over other wines. And this guy is a master in the kitchen and um, in front of the house. So what is in your glass today, Ms. Deborah? One of my favorite Zins of all time, which is da -da -da, OZB. Oh my goodness, I love that one. At Oak Ridge. So th this is their old Zin Vines, Lodi Old Vine Zin. I mean, I'm telling you, this is, you have to read this label before you drink it because after a glass of wine, you're just going, uh, -za -za -za. so. <laughs> and you won't stop drinking the wine until it's all gone. No, this is their tw uh, 2013. It is like raspberry jamminess. Mm like rolled in almost like a raspberry jam s'more because it has that kind of cocoa, chocolatey deliciousness. But then it also has a little bit of spice, which is delicious. And, uh, you know, obviously we love Oak Ridge Winery, but one of the fun things about them is that they're super social. So to connect with them, share when you're drinking their wine, it's at Oak Ridge Winery on Twitter. So make sure you let them know. They love using the hashtags of their wine, so hashtag old Zin Vine when you're talking about that wine. I just, I just formed. 
I love it. I love it. That is a delicious wine. One of our favorites for sure. So in my glass today, I have got Cigar Zen. Now, I have to tell you that this scared me because, you know, while I did smoke a very elegant cigar for a couple of years in my 20s, I haven't in forever. And um, and what it said to me, like when I when I saw the cigars in, I'm like, oh my God, it's gonna have tannins in it and I'm not gonna be able to drink it because I'm, you know, tannin sensitive. And the reality is it's it doesn't have it's not too heavy on the tannins. It is uber heavy on the alcohol. So this is a great wine if you just need to forget about the day. Um, and it's got some beautiful blackberry and plum notes, and you can definitely feel a little pepper and some herbs in there too. So I actually love it. It's very, um, it's it's really well structured and really well bodied as you can see here. So love it. What I, and, and these guys are not super social. So cigarzin.com is where you can find their wines. If you want to socialize with anybody who likes Cigars In, go ahead and use the hashtag Cigars In. And then I'm pairing this with a delicious four onion tart. And um, it's butter, cream, milk, Swiss cheese, red onion jam, smoked onions and eggs, delicious and pairs extraordinarily well with a good solid Zen. So that's where we're going with that. Yeah. That sounds delicious. You have about four zins to catch up on. That would be a fifth with that last one. Oh, so, Jesus. Well, let me let me just uh, get quiet for a minute and drink. Yeah, you know, here's the thing that I love about this grape is I, so in my mind, my mouth starts watering thinking about your onion tart because I think it, that would be perfect with it. You know, my favorite all-time go-to with, Zin, which you know, because I think we've actually had this together, is a lamb burger with like a really tremendous homemade garlic aioli, some goat cheese, and some roasted red bell peppers. Of course, I'll pin that recipe. But that it is one of those, it, to me, the term Zinmandel sounds French. It can, can I erase that thought from your mind? The um, actually the what you call it thought, the thought of having any. Now I see you there, and I see you a little frozen. We've got the we're still recording. We've got the Deborah Deer and headlights look right now, and we lost her at the point where she was talking about her fabulous Zen and how it sounded French. So I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, fill in the blanks while we um, get her back into the room. She should be back shortly. Uh, she has been having some power losses too. So uh, we may, um, I don't know, hopefully like say a little prayer. We'll get her back. So here's the deal with Zinfandel. Like they actually did some DNA fingerprinting on Zinfandel and they confirmed that the DNA that they found there was Italy's Primitivo and now I'm going to butcher the first part of this, Surlgenic Castellansky. And this is actually an ancient Croatian variety. So they're genetically identical to Zinfandel grapes, but there is differences in, in kind of the power of the Zinfandel, the cluster size um, and things of that nature. And really the cultivation will shift uh, the differences in cultivation tied to the tawa and also the winemaking processes uh, give Zinfandel like its own unique uh, flavor profile, uh, which is really Californian. Um, and from the Californian standpoint, we actually know that um, the majority of grapes that are grown in California right now are Zinfandel. I mean, it's, it's a really high number, and I think I have that here, so I'll get it to you in just a second. 47,000 acres, and it's grown in 45 of California's 58 counties, which is absolutely insane. So third leading wine grape variety in California, and it was introduced to California during the gold rush, somewhere in between 1852 and 1857. That was an interesting shot. And, um, 
<laughs> I think we've got Deborah back with us. You have about five or six Zinfandels to uh, to catch up with. But um, so just in kind of wrapping this so we can get back to Deborah, who's resetting up right now. The majority of these grapes, this is a little tragic to me. Um, and I think more experienced wine lovers feel the same way. But the majority of these grapes are actually used for making white Zinfandel. And, and it's, that's commonly known as beginner's wine. Why is it beginner's wine? It's a little on the sweet side. It's light in alcohol. It's light in just about everything that you can imagine. Those, um, those uh, grape peels sit like for moments before they're pulled out. So it has a very light pink color, but um, you know, it, it kind of carries through and everything else. And it is sweet. So these things, these grapes have been on the vine a little while as well to add to that sugar content. Deborah, are you back with us? I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me, but seriously, there was a huge gust of wind and all of the power went off on my street again. All of the garbage cans are knocked over. Um, can you e even hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you and we can see you. It looks a little dark there, <laughs> but you are rocking and rolling. So let me catch you up really quick. We like went down the whole history path. We're talking about DNA fingerprinting that was done on the Zinfandel grapes and that it's come, it's been confirmed that it came from Italy's Primitivo and it's genetically identical to Surlgenic Castellansky grapes, which is an ancient Croatian variety. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Um, totally heavy. You know, I think that's one of the fun things that we keep learning on the show together is the incredible history of each grape. And that, you know, I think when I was in my youth, I never really thought about it. I never really thought about the art or the lineage of a grape. Who thinks about that? <laughs> I think that's awesome. I changed to black and white because you had a different color scheme and I figured we'd give somebody, we, we'd try to keep it a little bit more uniform. I don't think I can get the same, the same effects that you have unless I go down to one light, which would be distract, distracting beyond compare. But um, yeah, so Zinfandel, like it, it hits California in the 1800s during the gold rush. I don't know who brought it over here, but I think I have a, I have a little note on that. And, um, and now it is the third leading wine grape variety in California, but most of that wine is going to White Zinfandel. Isn't that tragic? I heard you saying that, and that does make me sad, except for the fact that we have learned that White Zin is kind of like the, the gateway wine into other people, you know, testing out the wine space. Yes. So, so I think that while it's still like there when you can have something like this from the same grape that produces white zin, at least it's not dying for, uh, you know, a horrible reason. At least it's being crushed to bring people towards the light ultimately. <laughs> exactly. So I love that term, the gateway wine. And I also, I also love the fact that this is, it's a cultivating new wine drinkers and and the more the merrier right oh completely and i think that you know the i'm pretty sure my mom had white zin in a box in our refrigerator when i was really little like i think it was just kind of that first if we, we were living in california white zin was so popular it, back then it wasn't looked down upon no you know? it, in fact it was popular right it was, it was the go-to, you know, you didn't, the ladies didn't lunch without their white Zen. And exactly. And I think Sutter home was responsible for the big boom in, or this big boom in uh, white Zinfandel. Yeah, for sure. It was either Sutter home in our fridge, or I think the other one was Franzia. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, let's see. So we talked about the, um, we talked about there. Okay, so this is crazy. There's a 4,800 California red Zinfandel wines. 4,800 different types. I've got to work a little bit possible? harder. At sipping these. What? How is that even possible? 4,800? Yep, California red Zinfandel wines. Wow. I think because it's a third largest growing grape in uh, California, that's how it's possible. And and California is producing the most Zinfandel, right? 
Oh, so, gosh, yes, um, by far. I it, mean, it's, it is their flagship, I think. I think if you were to say, what, should, you know, who, what does the world know California for? It's Zen. Absolutely. And it just, it goes so well with food. I mean, I, I think it goes well with food because this is about the foodie side of the Zinfandel. I think it goes really great with the food because this jamminess and things like that go well with kind of the higher fat content food, I want to say, you know, those juicy cheeses and crusts and things oozing with marinade and, and incredible meats and even game. Um, where am I going with this? We're talking about food. Well, you know, what's, it, what's interesting is Zinn, again, it, it's one of those wines that I don't think I realized it's a great pizza wine. It's a great steak wine. It's a great burger wine. I mean, we're talking about the American staples and it totally makes sense. But when you hear it, it sounds fancy. Zinvidal sounds fancy to me. It doesn't sound break out the pizza. And so I wonder why there aren't more Zinfandel drinkers. So we're putting this question out to you guys. Is there a reason that you're Zin shy? That's if you are, we'd love for you to comment on the blog. And I think, Deborah, that's a wrap. Do you have anything for us beyond what we've shared? I think you've gotten all of the, the awesome points out. I think that, you know, just... For me, it's been quite a fun adventure at visiting and revisiting, I should say, the world of Zen and loving its jamminess, loving its tobacco-ness and the spiciness of it and just encouraging everyone out there to give it a try. Don't, don't leave it in the dust because you think it's just a dark white Zinvendel. <laughs> <laughs> Be bold and go where Zinfandels have gone before. Oh, my into Lord. the mouth, on the palate, and into your tummy. That was sci-fi. Okay. You just did sci-fi. I love you even more now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers. Cheers, honey. Yes, yes. Thanks and so cheers much, everyone, to all for of joining you. us. Yes, thanks, everyone, for joining us. That's a wrap. Make sure that... You let us know in the stream with Pound Woman on Wine what is in your glass, what your favorite sin is. Tell us what your favorite zin sin is. What's your favorite thing to pair it with? And we would love to keep the conversation going in the in-between time. Until then, cheers. Cheers. Zin, 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 zin. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. And just when you think you've got everything where you need it.